Hello everybody, it is Caleb here, and today I want to show you a slightly different method of video mapping than I've shown you in the past. It uses multiple layers on each of the independent boxes or polygons that you want to map, and then you send individual content zoomed in and stretched and mapped to that piece to different layers, and all the layers come together on this one surface. I'll show you in a second. But the hardware you're going to need is two Windows PCs, maybe three, depending on how uh, intense your project is. And uh, those PCs, one of them doesn't have to be that high tech or you know high specs, because it's just going to run Grand MA and MA3D. But your media server PC does have to have a pretty decent video card and decent RAM. And that's why sometimes you have to incorporate a third PC in or a second video PC to help share the load of sending video down those CITP feeds. Uh, you're also going to need a network switch. And if you're using MAVPU as your media server, you won't need any node or any MA parameters. With all of your machines, they have to have an Ethernet port. They can't have all USB ports and you use a USB to Ethernet because I've bought the most expensive USB to Ethernets that I can find at Best Buy and they didn't send the CITP information that I needed. As soon as I connected to Ethernet, it worked like a charm. So yeah, they have to have an Ethernet port. Let's look at the software I'm using. Lower grade machine. This is the one that's not so hot. I'm running Grand MA. And then I've got an APC40 running RD tools that gives me, uh, well, it gives me encoder wheels, which will help in video mapping later down the road. Ethernet being sent out of this laptop down my snake to my network switch. And then coming out of my network switch, I am connected to my gaming machine which has a NVIDIA GeForce 1050 and then I'm also connected by Ethernet to my secondary uh, secondary media machine. So let's dive into the programming. First thing we want to do is configure our IP addresses. So go to control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, right click on Ethernet to go to properties, and then click on Internet Protocol Version 4 Properties and set your IP address there. Now go to Setup, Patch and Fixture Schedule, and we're going to patch our media server. Go to From Library and type in VPU, and then we're going to want to import one master fixture. I like to set that ID at 101. Set our camera fixture. I like to set that at 102. And the camera is the imaginary lens that's viewing all the two-dimensional media content surfaces that are in your 3D space that v VPU creates. Let's patch in 10 layers and go ahead and exit that out of that. And remember that you do have to have all of those layers in the same layer of your patch like I did. Turn on our CITP enabled, even though we can't add our media servers. And let's go to our media servers and configure those IP addresses. So we're here and we can see that we have a funky IP address for this media server. So let's go to network, MA net IP, and change that to our ethernet adapter. If you need to change that IP address, it's done the same way that I just showed you. After restarting, we can confirm that we have the correct IP address. So let's go to our second media machine and configure that IP. It's done the same way. And if you need to change your IP address, that's done the same way as well. So after we've set our IPs, then we're going to go back to front of house and go to MA Network Configuration and add our media servers by hitting Add Present. And it looks like we accidentally booted up one of our media servers in the wrong MA version. So give me a second while I exit out of that program and boot it back up in version 3.3.4.1. And typically your network configuration should roll over if you went through all the trouble of changing your network config 
it should roll over to the new version booted up. And you can change that layer that I'm changing now in your media server, but I find it easier to change here. So now let's add our media servers in our CITP network configuration that we were just in. Go ahead and hit add present and then set that fixture layer to VPU2 as well. Next, we're gonna flash our two media servers to make sure we have MA connection. And we won't have a CITP connection yet, but I just wanna make sure that everything is gravy so far. Turn those on. And if you did not get a flash at that time, it is probably because you haven't allowed one of these programs through your firewall. You need to have MA3D, MAVPU, and MA2 on PC all through your firewall. So go into search, type firewall. It's done the same on all Windows machines. We're in MA3D now and we're going to build our screens. All you have to do is take a primitive box for a typical screen. And what we are going to do is build five video strips parallel all next to each other and that is going to be one video surface. Set the proper size of my screens and then just control D to duplicate those all the way down. And let's center those up. And then you're going to select one of them and go into your materials window. And this is when we're going to decide how we're dividing up our layers per machines if you're using multiple machines. I know that my Dell Inspiron or my desktop RBQ, as it says, can handle significantly more uh, CITP feeds and more juice than my CyberNet. So I'm going to assign my laptop to layers one, two, and three, while I only assign my cybernet to layers one and two. Well, to layers four and five. Let's give it some content so that we can make sure that it is connecting properly. And then connect our other two devices. And I actually want to take a minute to explain the uh, why I said don't turn your uh, laptop performance to 100% when plugged in. Because that's how I had my laptop set thinking I can get more CITP frame rate. And what actually happened is I left to the grocery store to get some food. And when I came back, not even 15 minutes later, my NVIDIA card had shut down all of my uh, programs looked different and uh, my video card was not responding. So I did a couple reboot tests. Uh, it said my system was fine and when I booted it back up, the NVIDIA card was working. And speaking of things not working, it looks like my VPU on my CyberNet has crashed. It says two objects not released. And that happens sometimes when you first boot up the computers and connect to CyberNet or connect to CITP feed. Usually it only does it once. I've only seen it do it once and then it works fine for the rest of that show files duration. So I'm not sure why it does that, but give that a reboot and you should be good. What we're going to do next is give some content to the VPU to put up so that we have something a little bit prettier to look at after we map it. But first, let's look at our CITP frame rate in our media server. I've got 4.3 frames per second, which doesn't come through as 4.3 frames per second on MA3D, but that's acceptable by the hardware that I currently have. By the way, all of your content that goes into VPU has to be in MPEG-4 format. If it's not, it won't play. A good app I use to convert this form, this content is Wondershare, and I'll leave a link in the description. It allows you to convert about 30, 20 to 30 gigabytes of video content into whatever form 
you want it to go to without crashing. Any more than that, I found it crashes towards the end. So let's map our content. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Grab all of our layers and turn them at full and give them a color bars test to work with or a uh, color test of sorts. Go to our video scale up in the corner and we want to raise that X value up to the point where it looks right. That looks a little bit skinny to me, but let's find out later. Then you're gonna go to your first parameter and just make sure that it is highlight and then go all the way around on your parameters options to V position. And the most obnoxious part about this is cycling through your parameters. So once you're on V position, you wanna turn your scale all the way up because that is going to determine how far you can actually move your layers to map them. Turn your X parameter to move your layers horizontally, Y vertically, and Z would be towards you. And that's what I want to explore next and make some 3D video maps. So I could already see that on my first layer, I've got part of the circle, which doesn't look right. So I either need to lower the overall screen size of my strips, which I'm going to do now, or raise the X scale value of my map, which I think I'll have to do a little bit of both. So let's adjust those. And yeah, I'm gonna have to raise my scale on all of them. So let's move those final layers into position just by hitting next and changing our parameters. And I forgot to turn the scale up on this one so it's not going over far enough. So watch what happens when I turn that scale value up. So now that one's in position, all of our layers are mapped and we're going to want to save this mapping to a preset so that we can access it later. But before we do that, we're going to want to take the content parameters out so that those values are not stored in our preset. So let's create a pool or a uh, preset, if I could find it. There we go, preset video. We want to go to our content layer and turn that images parameter to off and image pool parameter to off so that that information is not stored. Assign that, or we'll call it mapped, and let's play that back and uh, escape out of that. And then store that as a queue so that it's always running. Now that we have that, we can bring up our layers individually with a bit of content and they should always come out mapped and we can play whatever content we would like over that surface. Like I said, the frame rate isn't the best, but if you're just doing down and dirty programming and want to make sure that your desired content is getting up on the screen and is relatively mapped, then this is the solution for you. The final thing we wanna do with our video screens to make them look like video screens is select all of them and go into our materials window and turn all of our diffuse colors down and all of our emissive colors up, which makes them glow in a dark room. We can turn our specular power down to reduce the glare, but eventually it'll just make your screens too dark. So turn down our house lights and we can see that it's still lit from the screens and we've got a show going on. 
Thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see more content just like this, then subscribe and turn on notifications. Hope to see you around. Hope you see me around and have good gigs. Later guys.